Hi, and welcome. I'm Lauren Fritch, and today I have with me a special guest, Stephanie Steyer, who is the creator of Muse Boards and the Muse Method. We're talking today because Stephanie is going to be a crucial part of the Muse experience, and the reason I reached out to her is, first of all, I've always wanted to work with her um, in a small group setting with her Muse Method, and specifically for Muse, where we are, obviously the name is in alignment, which is wonderful um, and was not planned. Um, the other piece is that because we're looking at our vision for the next five to 10 years, our vision for our life, our business, our leadership, and because we're talking about it from the perspective of having a vision and then giving voice to that vision, I wanted to have something very tangible that our participants in the music experience could have that would be a really beautiful and visual, <laughs> visual anchor that they could look to. And the amazing part about what Stephanie does is it's alchemical and she's gonna tell us a little bit more about it, um, but also it creates a work of art. And um, we spend so much of our lives in a digital space and it, it's wonderful and it facilitates connections like these. And there is something to be said for having an actual artifact in our hands, our hot, sticky little hands that um, that we get to take with us wherever we go. Some people have small travel muse boards. And so with that um, in the back of our minds, I would love Stephanie to talk about, I mean, first, just tell us a little bit about muse boards, because I think it's easy for someone to go, oh, that's a vision board right? And um, and dismiss it and not realize, again, the alchemical process that, that takes place. So tell us a little bit about how you created this process um, and, and what they really are. Thank you, Lauren. Hi, everyone. My name is Stephanie, and I'm so excited to be with you and be here with you, Lauren. Um, Muse Boards came. Uh, oh, sorry, that's my dog. <laughs> She snores, snores badly. Um, Muse boards started, I have, my background is a professional graphic designer. I've been a designer forever. And um, when I would work with clients years ago um, at, at creating their visual identity, which now a lot of people refer to as branding, um, I would have them go through magazines and just, see images, pull them out of the magazine. Just it, what it did was it helped me get a sense of who they are on a different level than a mental level of, well, I want my logo to be blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, cause, cause the images they would pick informed me about so many other things. Like, did they love the outdoors? Did they love water? Did they love orange, you know, I mean, there's all sorts of things. So, so many different kinds of information I could get. So that's how it started. And then um, I wouldn't do anything with those images other than look at them. Um, but from that, I could talk with the client. I had I always did it in person, mostly then. Um, and then um, I could design something for them because I got a sense of their energy and a deeper understanding of who they were or are. And um, so about 10 years ago, I was given an opportunity to redesign a woman's um, identity. She is a uh, PR person and she has a firm in San Francisco. And I went, I was working with a friend and they had all the contact with her. I did not have any contact with her. And I, it, I was given the job of, okay, go now. Here's all, oh, they gave me all this data that they had collected, my, my two uh, friends. Um, they had Word docs, they had cloud images, they had all these things. They had interviewed her clients, uh, her team, um, her, but um, I, I didn't get a sense of her from the data. So uh, I'm sitting at my computer that morning and going, 
I don't know how to do this, right? I don't know her. I had never talked to her. So I was given her Pinterest login, you know, page. So I could go and look at her Pinterest. So I thought, okay, well, I'm going to start there. And I started looking through all her images. And, and 10 years ago, Pinterest was not like it is now. So it was much calmer. It was easy. So I just started looking at it and I went, Oh, okay. So I could understand that she liked really modern things. She liked a specific color red because she kept picking the same color red. She, but she was really um, sort of like focused on details. And I got all that from the images that I saw. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to put together a mood board for her. And um, so I, um, put this board together and I ended up showing it to my, my contact Tom. And he was like, Whoa, this is amazing. We have to include it in our presentation when we get there. So um, from that moment on, it was like, I had talked to her. I knew who she was. I got a sense of her. I, mm -hmm. it still gives me goosebumps to even talk about this. Um, so I designed it, did all that stuff. And we went to San Francisco and I presented the creative part, but first they, we, I put together the whole presentation and then um, Tom and Linda, they did their little spiel and we got to the creative part where I showed the logo and the, you know, everything. Right. But the first thing I showed was that mood board and she started to cry. She felt seen. And after that, it was like everything what related, you know, like the colors oh my we gosh. I pulled out. Yeah. And so it was like, she was just, I, it was like, I, I just, I hooked her in, you know, it was just, it was so easy because it was her. She mm -hmm. had informed my designing for her. So I started doing, and then she was, she was just like, okay, I'm in you know, where do I sign basically? Um, and so from then on, I started doing, uh, and then I renamed them muse boards and I trademarked that. And, and so they are more than a vision board. Mm -hmm. And I started working with clients and realizing that if they select the images, um, and I put together, uh, the collage, like a vision board, um, their inner critic doesn't play, doesn't get involved because so many times we have images, you know, some beautiful thing, but we, there's a little part of us that hesitates to put that on our board or there's a voice that says, I'm not there yet. Or I'm not good enough. Right. Yet. Right. This isn't for me. Right. I don't wow. deserve all the, right. you know, we could go on. Yeah. We could, yeah. On pages and pages of those. Um, and I've had clients say to me after they've seen their muse board, it, oh, wow, oh man, I would have really struggled putting that on my, if, if I was making a vision board. Um, but so thank you for putting that on. Um, I have that same client has, is her board is probably nine years old. She still uses it every single mm -hmm. day, still. And she told me, she said, I still get new information from this board. I am finding myself even more in this, in the images that she selected. So the client selects the images and then I just put it together. So not all mm. of the images make it. Some of them do, some of them don't. Of course. Of course. Um, and then they've evolved to, there, there was a time it was just for visual identity or branding. Um, but then people started asking me, is there a way we could have a muse board that's around something more personal just for me? Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're talking five, six years ago and I, I'm like, okay. And so I would just sort of tune in and meditate on it. And like, what else do these want to be? And so they have turned into becoming these little beautiful round objects of art and that is so I, stunning, Stephanie. Thank you. This one is oh my goodness. 
soul of my business. A lot of these I'm are crying. Oh, it's so, so pretty. <laughs> no, I love it. Thank you. I want one for uh, my daughter. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. So <laughs> these things have evolved where at first I was like, I don't know how I could do it for personal ideas, but that's where the muse method was then created. So I help people just get clear on how they want to be in the world. And what I've found is these muse boards create a ripple effect mm -hmm. because when we feel good, when we remember, that's the biggest thing is they help us remember. They remember who we are, really want to be, who we are truly on the inside. Um, and I've had a client, she really was scared of, terrified of getting pregnant, but really wanted a family. So she did a muse board all around pregnancy. She wasn't pregnant. And about a year later, she was had a baby. Wow. And yeah, and now she has two. Wow. The first one was IVF and the second one was natural. So wow. That's they, fascinating. Yeah, they're they're amazing. And and other clients who have like, where do I want to live? And then they create a muse board and less than a year she this client is living her dream life on a with a beautiful home on a lake in Minneapolis. So Ooh, it never yeah. occurred to me that we could do one around location. Yes, you can. You food, can do them. For, for I found that we can do them for anything. You know, um, as long as we are, I, I try to, the muse method with, through the muse method, I really try to guide people to um, be very clear on their intention and mm -hmm. then go from there and and it's easy to get distracted because there's so many ways you could go right mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, that's my job to help keep people focused so how neat um I mean obviously I've known you for I don't know what would you say like six or seven Five, years six years six years yeah, yeah. um but I, I don't, don't know think I've, a I've, pandemic warped time warp time <laughs> I don't think that I've, I, A, I don't think I've heard the story of the PR lady and that, the impact that that had on her. I love that you did it in a like conventional pitch and it just <laughs> changed everything for her. I, I mean, that's awesome. Um, so within the context of the muse, I'm talking about how each of our participants can, can turn inward and find the muse within. And I, you are an artist. I'm, I'm so curious to hear, obviously you work with the muse concept all the time, but what is your relationship to the muse and how does it come into the work that you're doing? What's your muse? Ooh, well, nature is my muse. Mm. Um, it always has been. I can look back on, um, I, I find it fascinating to pay attention to my process. Like I have to sit with things. I can't just instantly turn on the design button and go, Phew, that's it, or the art button and, and do it. I have to sit and let it sort of integrate into my body. And even when I had my design firm in San Francisco, I would have to get out and I'd walk the streets. And there's not a lot of nature in San Francisco, not like being in the forest, but what inspired me would be going into the beautiful boutique stores along Union Square and touching the sleeves of gorgeous clothes or looking at the colors or some, I remember being in uh, Comte de Gasson and just like, oh my gosh, you know, I could not even begin to afford anything, but I could look, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so beauty inspires me, nature mm -hmm. inspires me. Um, and knowing my process, you know, that I can't rush, necessarily rush things. Um, and sometimes the muse comes at two o'clock in the morning and she oh. wakes me up, you know, <laughs> it's like, get up, here's the idea. <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's really neat. Um, Have you read Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert? 
I have. I find that a, an inspiring book. Um, yeah, I don't. Too. I don't have it with me where I am. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I am an artist, and the the muse comes when it when it comes. Right. I really right. struggle actually with the nighttime stuff because I used to have this pen that had a little flashlight, and I need to get it. I need to order one again because um, I have. To, I struggle making the decision to like get down the thoughts. Yeah. But um, like, I'll have a whole, for me, it's narrative, right? It's a story. So I'll have a whole story come in at night and I'll like lay there. And then when I wake up in the next, the next morning, it's completely gone uh, um, and I can't get it back the way it was. And sometimes I think they're really good. So for me, I've, I've got to, I've got to get it down in that, yeah. that time. It's just yeah. hard for me to get up. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, I understand. I some a lot of times those ideas will come to me at like it in a I'll hear it, right? Oh, That's cool. How, yeah, so I'll hear it and then I'll see it if it's a visual. Mm -hmm. But I sometimes I and I think, oh, I'll remember, right? <laughs> ah, no. But I I grab my phone and I record something okay. so that okay. remind me. But yeah, that's, that's good. I, I, yeah. No, it's it's a process. Now I have one last question for today. Sure. Um, I want to know what's on your mind for the next five or 10 years of your vision <sighs> for your work, for your life, for your art. What's, what's on deck? Yeah. Uh, great question. And in, you know, in years past, it would have freaked the hell out of me. Uh, but we had just, we've just gone through solstice and I've been in the last year really focused on doing ritual for myself and uh, tuning in to what my body wants and what I feel. And there's some really huge shift ha happening in around me right now, mm -hmm. which is going to free me up. And one of the things that I keep hearing and keep needing to do is more art for myself, painting or drawing. And so I need a, a work balance with that, you know, so design and art. I know yeah. it seems kind of, kind of like, well, aren't they both art, but they're not. So no, they're different. I, yeah. So I, um, I, I really want to start my painting practice and, drawing my sketchbook yeah. drawing and I don't know how that is going to shift things for me but um between between integrating my art more into my life I know it's going to inform the muse boards and vice versa and um so we'll see oh I have and, thoughts I mean, can I tell you what I think yeah yeah that is spidey senses sure um Stephanie, you, I, I don't know your style. I've never seen your visual work, but there's something about like America, American folk art to me. Oh, and okay. I don't, I mean, however you do it, but I see you being like a legit visual artist. Oh, cool. But well, I like that. Spiritual tinges. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've been doing a lot of Buddhas, but they're not like a, a calm Buddha. They got lots of color and even though they're serene faces. Fun. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Fun. So I wanted to say something because I think it will apply to your art as well. Um, that the the muse boards have a talismanic effect. Absolutely. On the 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 client or the, I don't know what to call them, but the people who, who then hold the muse board, yeah. it's for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's very clear because I remember speaking with Chris Prochaska years ago Yep. and her sharing how transformative her muse board was for her. And she's a super powerful lady regardless. Yeah. Yeah, and it it was like a springboard almost for her growth. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with who I'm talking with, it's Chris with a K, K R I S Prochaska. She is a human design expert, and and she does great work. Um, yeah, so is. if you want to check her out, please do. Yeah, and she's, um, 
she's the uh I did her logo design for her which she's still using and yeah and it's all 10 years old and it yeah. which came from you know was informed from her muse board, her muse so. board wow that's cool well I think that's an excellent place for us to wrap up um Stephanie will you share your Instagram handle because I can't remember it off the top of my oh, head oh yeah yeah do you want me to t say it out loud? Just say it out loud and then I'll put it okay. in the in the comments okay. too below. Yeah, so it's all lowercase. It's Stephanie, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E underscore Steyer, S-T-E-Y-E-R. Cool, thank you. And um, I, like I said, I'll put a link to your Instagram profile in the description of the video right. and also to your website so people can see what you're doing. Uh -huh. The reason I, I love, so you just talked about ritual and you just posted your solstice altar, I think the other day yeah. on Instagram yeah. and it was arresting, right? Like, cause you know, you're scrolling and sometimes we don't stop scrolling, right? We're just... And it really, it was a scroll stopper. It was really beautiful. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I am very much looking forward to the vision board, pro vision board, uh, muse board process. <laughs> and I know it's a slip, right? We're so okay. used to saying it that. It happens. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I am participating too, not just the participants of the muse experience. And for us, it comes in the first, um, third of our time together over the six months. And I very much think that it's going to be a really fascinating and powerful process to have the, the muse boards being there at the initiatory phases and see how having those totemic talismanic yeah. elements can inform what we do together. So, yeah, I yay. really want to, um, I really want to just add one thing and that I want to make clear. And that is that when I work with, with someone, they are very much a part of the process. I don't want them to, because I've even had people say, oh, do you pick the pictures? And it's like, no. So we get to a point where I help you to pick the images. And then when you feel good about them, um, that's when the muse board gets made, but it's, yeah. it's, so it's a very much collaborative yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for your time and I will see you soon online. Yes. Thank you, Lauren.